Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Community Connections. As always, so excited to bring you great guests. Today, we have Nicole Love Hendrickson. She is chairwoman of the Gwinnett County Board of Commissioners with us. Nicole, my friend, how are you today? I am so good today. Happy Friday, Ryan. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I'm not even going to say what I normally say to be in these shows with the internet and technology. So we're all having good vibes and knocking on wood, right, Nicole? That's right. Well, we'll jump right into it. I was just saying before we went on air, you're doing so many awesome things. You're all over the place. I can't I can't see something without seeing Nicole there. And that just is, that makes me very happy and a notice for our county. But why don't you just tell our audience who doesn't know about you or your background, your family, just something about you. And I think you were you from Rhode Island or had gone to school in Rhode Island? I am. I was born and raised in Rhode Island. Um, I went to high school right after, actually high school and undergraduate school at the University of Rhode Island, where I earned my undergraduate degree in psychology. And after college, I left Rhode Island to move to Maryland and worked for the Baltimore School District as a counselor. And so I did that for three years and I decided that that was a lot of work working with inner city kids in the heart of um, in the heart of Baltimore. And I realized that a lot of the struggles um, needed greater so support and resources than I could give as a counselor. So decided to go to school to get my degree in social work. That's what led me to Georgia because I went to the University of Georgia School of Social Work and got my master's degree. And um, I always tell the story because people always ask, well, what, what made you come to Georgia? And I said, well, I was dating a guy at the time and we were dating long distance. And so, um, you know, I moved down just to see how things would work out with him and uh, go to school at the same time. Well, he is now my husband uh, for eight years and we have a beautiful seven-year-old son and we live in Lilburn, Georgia, and we are in just the best community in Gwinnett County. But I've been a resident of Gwinnett for 14 years now. Wow. Well, you know, I'm thinking back now that I, that popped in my head. I remember years ago in business, I'm gonna see if I don't get this wrong. I had a client in Boston but if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, Providence, Rhode Island is really not that far to Boston. Is that right? About a 45 minute drive. I remember just, doing just, it. I'm like, wait, this state is pretty small. <laughs> it is. You know, you it's Georgia, a hop, skip, and a jump, literally from end to end. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, you know, so I've, I've been here my entire life, and so you know, used to these big borders, and so they're like, yeah, you can be over there in 45 minutes. I'm like, but it's a different state. And they're like, sir, have you consulted a map? <laughs> so, well, um, I, I will share Gwin uh, Gwinnett County's population is the same population size as the state of Rhode Island. So oh, really? I'm essentially governing a county the same size as the governor of Rhode Island. So, well, how about that? Well, you know, we're glad you're here in Georgia, and so um, you know, and th those degrees are impressive. The psychology, and I know EGA's uh, Master of Social Work is a great degree, and so you had to learn all the go dogs, woof woof woof, and you know all the stuff you had to learn. But it makes you a true uh, Southern or not, right? Right. Um, well, That's you right. Know, we well, we were talking too, because you're um, just, why don't you just give people, because I know a lot of people ask me this question, we were talking about before we went on air, people were like, well, what exactly does the Board of Commissioners oversee? Um, you're the chairwoman, but is there a brief way to describe that? Yeah, yeah, so uh, the every, all 159 counties in Georgia has a Board of Commissioners, which they're governed by, so it is the entity that uh, sets policy for the county. So we set all of the ordinances. We also set the millage rate for the county. We also address economic development. We address zoning. So uh, we make decisions on where businesses go in the community, where um, you know different entities are housed. And we also are uh, the decision-making body for community development and ensuring that our community thrives. So we, we have a big responsibility in making a lot of uh, very important decisions for citizens of Gwinnett. Now the chair person in the chair's role really serves as that face uh, of the county. Um, it is the, the designee that represents the county in all matters across, uh, across the state and also works with the cities and the state legislators. The chair also runs the, the board of commissioner meetings um, on Tuesdays and so which are very fun. But we have a five member board. Uh, every commissioner represents a district and districts are divided by population size. Uh, we are coming up on redistricting because you know, of the census, which every 10 years, 
And so there are four district commissioners that represent different areas of the county and then the chair is countywide. So um, I represent all citizens regardless of what district you live in. Cool. Well, I, I've gotten to learn a little bit more. I, I think I recent show had, um, you know, uh, Charlotte Nash, who's, who's an old friend of mine, and she was explaining the, uh, I guess, the life of being free of uh, you know, not having everything. And then uh, got to know Jasper Watkins really well, uh, doing some things. So there's some of the board members, and you guys do great work. And uh, But right now, Nicole, you know, we're kind of what I call, we've been in this pandemic, you know, I don't know, what, 13 months, 14 months. And I know you're out and about, but what's, what do you think in Gwinnett County uh, with, what is it, about a million people, roughly? Is that about right? Is that about right? Yeah. Uh, what do you see? I mean, this show I named it Community Connections that began it right before the, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, what do you think is so special? And, you know, we got so much great stuff, I would say, anyway, from businesses and nonprofit and government. But what is some of your favorite part about our community, which I define as Gwinnett, that you get to see on a daily basis? The, my, my absolute favorite part is uh, just seeing how our community pulls together whenever there is a need. I mean, we, this truly is a, a great place to live, work, play, and raise a family. Um, Gwinnett County has amazing services that we provide to the community from public safety to world-class parks to um, economic development opportunities and business opportunities. And I, I just love driving around the county and just seeing all of the different uh, unique features and aspects of different sides of the county. Um, you know, whether you're in a city or municipality or different districts, there's always something that um, truly makes, creates the sense of place for people who choose to make Gwinnett County their home. Um, I am a big parks person. I love our, I love our parks. I love our yeah. recreation centers. Of course, I, ha and I have a seven-year-old son. And so it's, it's a great way to, to ha have activities to grow as, you know, a family, as a community and creating that sense of place. I also love the diversity and I love that you can go to all kinds of restaurants and visit different communities of culture with, without ever having to travel across the world. You get it right here because the world truly is here in Gwinnett County. And uh, it, it just is what, Draw, drew me to this county. It's what made me decide to choose, make this my home. Um, it really reminded me of all the things that I loved about my home, the diversity and um, the interconnectivity and all of the different amenities that truly create that sense of place and community. And I just, I, I think Gwinnett has all of that. Love that, man. That is awesome. Uh, you gave me a little, some goosebumps there, but yeah, you know, I can remember at the very beginning of the pandemic, I'm sure with you, you said as your son, right? Seven, seven years old, um, when they had shut the parks down, you know, and they had everything, it was, and seeing things slowly start to open back up was that all did, you know, you saw people uh, jump, jump back up and be, want, want to be with their fellow person. And um, I don't know about you, Nicole, but when I see business owners or nonprofits or anybody, they're, I don't know what the word, they're just fired up to like come back, man. I mean, do you see in that? It's like, they want to come out with a vengeance, right? Yeah, it, you know, we, we've been in isolation for so long and, and people are just really itching to get out. And now that we've gotten the vaccine rollout happening at this very moment, moment as soon as people are getting the shot and their vaccination, they're ready. They're, they're like, this is my chance to get out and live life and, um, you know, get back to the pre-pandemic times where I could just enjoy being free without the fear of, um, my threat being at health or uh, what have you. And so, yeah, people are just really itching to get out. And, and I'm seeing that a lot, you know, because people really crave connectivity. People crave that, um, you know, being around others and just that that deeper connection that you just can't get virtually. You can't get through a computer screen, unfortunately. No, no. Well, well, well when I see in person, well, whatever we're doing there, handshakes, fist bumps, elbow bumps, every time I meet a person, I'm you like, never you, know. you, you we tell need a me. button that says what you're comfortable with. Wear a button that says fist bump only or elbow only. <laughs> okay, so you, you experience the same thing. Every place I go, it's like, Hey man, just and, and I, I, I unfortunately I'm I'm through. Uh, got another week, my second vaccine to fully kick in. I've had that, and I tell people all the time, get get the vaccination. You know, uh, it'll get us back to living our yes. lives again. And you know, I I actually got hit personally with COVID and got it really bad. And I will tell you, the 48 hours you might not feel comfortable with a shot. It's nothing compared to getting it really bad. So. I want people to be out, man. We got the summer coming up and I need, you know, the mayors and they're doing great things in these cities. We want to get people safely back out, you know? And Agreed. 
I agree. Yeah. And, I, and we're encouraging people to get the vaccination. Um, you know, and of course, that that is your personal choice. You have to do what's best for you and your family. Um, you know, I got the, the vaccination last week, too. And so I get my next dose next week uh, in two weeks. And I'm excited about that. But we're encouraging those who are comfortable and, and are at that point where they're ready to just go ahead and sign up and get um, you know, get that vaccination so that we can reach that point of herd immunity so that we can really get this behind us and um, start being out and, and being free like we, like we used to and what, what, we're, uh, what we've always enjoyed. Right. And, you know, with your background in psychology and social work, I mean, as you said, that's why I named this show Community Connections. It's not just Gwinnett or Atlanta. You know, it could be Rhode Island. It could be Baltimore. Human beings are, are made, even if you're introverted, you know, an intro introverted person, uh, you still need the human touch of connection. Yeah, and absolutely. This, yeah, and this has been something I don't, you know, I mean, you have the Spanish flu. There's nobody around to tell us about that time. But you know, for a hundred, we've never had anything. I've been saying history is going to be studying this point in time for the next a hundred years. And from animals to people to habits, um, Nicole, probably you've ordered, like I have Uber Eats or, well, you know, all the play DoorDash, whatever. But I bet, I mean, I'm just giving you one prediction that never again will you have to go to your door to get your food. Right. And that's, a, I like that. I, I agree. I agree. It's it's so different how we've adapted and have done things that we never would have thought to do. And now our lives have changed so much that now we rely on things that we're doing now, like ordering out and uh, the door delivery services and even the Zoom connections and the Zoom meetings. Um, you know, we, we've kind of made that part of our way of life. Yeah. And, and I've, I've said in a couple of shows, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my dissertation on leadership and I part of what I'm studying is, um, you know, business, small business success. And this was even pre-COVID. But what I'm wondering is what things are going to last. So if there's a meeting, you know, that maybe some meetings would be virtual if they don't have to be in person or get somebody an option to dial in that we never, never would have thought through before. You know, we just said, is you're either here or you're not. And now we maybe will do it a little differently. Yeah, we're, we're totally hybrid. We've, we've learned how to adapt and embrace technologies, even at, in Gwinnett County government, where we've had a lot of our employees start working from home. Well, we've we found that actually when some of our employees in certain, certain divisions are more productive when they work at home versus coming into the office, but we're trying to test out different hybrid models where they can, uh, you know, be home virtually and work virtually, but also come in for those necessary tasks that do require some of that team building and that connection. But we've also learned how to um, deliver services. We've learned how to engage and communicate with the public and meeting people where they are. Um, you know, for senior services, for example, um, you know, we're uh, continuing to do activities with our seniors. Of course, they're at high risk groups, so we can't bring them back in person, but we're working through all kinds of ways to do different cooking demos through virtual opportunities and exercise classes and um, having guest speakers and allowing, uh, you know, our seniors to be able to connect through senior services in different ways. So we've, we've adjusted and adapted in, in meeting communities where they are embracing and adapting to the different technologies that we have at our disposal. So it's, it's been great. You know, I love it. And, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have all, because you've been on the board, what, for how many years now? Have you been on the board? I, well, I, this is my first year. Oh, first, I, I'm I, sorry. I, I've been on the board for, a, it's, I just had my 100 day mark <laughs> last <Okay>. week. <laughs> I, well, well, I was reading your resume before you went on air. You have so many accolades. I might have, you've done so much that I was thinking like, you've been on this and that. But, well, because okay. I worked, because I worked for the Board of Commissioners for five years before I ran for office for gotcha. Charlotte's seat when she decided to not run for Got office. It. So Got technically, I've, I've been an employee for five years and worked for the Board of Commissioners. So that that is that's probably where where you got that from. So that's it right. was close. That's, that's all right. Well, you had your hand in that. What about during this time? You know, I was on a friend of a colleague of mine's show, and she was doing a show called Thriving in Uncertainty. I'm sure you know you got to experience firsthand a lot of things, decisions that were made over the last 13, 14 months. That I tell people, business owners, listen to this. Uh, you know, if you're you know, my friend, Laura Drake, she runs the South City when at Co-op, who we just uh, profiled in one of our magazines. There was no blueprint for this to go, well, here's what you do. Here's step one, right? I mean, was it just everybody could kind of get together and say, let's one day at a time? I mean, how did you guys approach everything? Yeah, and that you're exactly right. There was no blueprint because we've never faced um, a crisis to this magnitude. Um, but like any crisis, when you're about to face 
any amount of uncertainty or ambiguity, um, you know, it's it's really important to uh, act as quick to, as quickly as possible to try to mitigate against any um, detrimental impacts. And the the longer you wait to make a decision, the more chaos can ensue. And so I think what leaders have had to have had to do was was act swiftly. You have to act swiftly. You have to communicate constantly to the public every step of the way, there was no such thing as over communicating. You had to continue over communicating because the people were fear, fearful. There was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of uh, misinformation being put out there. And so you had to be clear and concise in your communication. You had to be open and transparent. Talk about what you're going to do and what impact that's gonna have along the way. People need to understand and see visually and even conceptualize what all was going to happen. And so I, I think it, it made, people at ease when they knew that their leaders were acting, were communicating on what they were going to do, what those next steps were going to be. We all needed direction. We were all looking for direction and we needed our leaders to do that. And that's what our leaders did. And, and then just pulling people together because we knew we couldn't shut county government down, but it was let's, let's pull, our, pull our resources together and see what we can do. Let's not focus on what we can't do, but let's focus on the things that are in our control. Let's focus on what resources we have at our disposal, bringing people to the table, who's going to do what and just get it done. It was the get it done attitude. We just had no choice otherwise because we couldn't shut county government down, um, especially the essential services like public safety, like permitting, like transportation, like water. I mean, these are all things that county government runs that we just could not shut down. So we had to adapt and get it done. Um, and I'm so proud of our employees for stepping up to the plate and those that had to work through the pandemic um, that provided those essential services just to get it done. But it was a lot of uncertainty and um, it was very scary. Um, I, I would also share that um, during this time, a lot of leaders demonstrated a lot of empathy, a lot of compassion, um, because that matters. You know, it wasn't about let's look at our stakeholders as commodities and numbers on a chart, but let's look at the human side of it too and how this really is going to affect people emotionally and how we can make sure that we keep that, that um, em empathic leadership that was compassion, uh, compassionate, but also driven by vision and where we needed to go. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to see if you can help me write my dissertation because that, that I mean, that is the best. I, mean, I want you just, to. I want to. Have, yeah, you let me know. <laughs> I, well, you know, I, I mean, I, I, my last, uh, I, I do a lot of speaking, and the last speech I gave in big time in person was in Vegas of February, I guess, 2020, and then about three weeks later, and, and funny enough, uh, Nicole, the speech was on the importance of human to human, and I look now at how crazy that was of like. I bet that speech would be 85 times more important you know, right now. Yes. And, you know, that's something I, I miss greatly, you know, talking to big groups and whatever. So, but anyway, you just motivated me. That's the best. I, I'm, I forgot I was even, what don't I want to even say next? Because I'm, I'm pulled into this. I love the over-communicate. I had a third book idea I was going to do, over-communicate to avoid misunderstandings. And every time I said it, though, people thought I was saying you should talk more, send more out. And what I was trying to say is make sure your message is more clear, consistent, so you get rid of, like you said, misinformation yes. and rumors and stuff. But, you know, people, if they don't hear anything, cre um, uh, sort of paranoia might uh, sink yes. in. And then and it's repetition. It's that repetition, that constant repetition of the facts. Right. And then people start, you know how it is. It's exactly what you're talking about in social work. You know, you let things linger. And, and you, you got me thinking, too, the other thing I always would say is like, the longer a problem sits, the worse it gets. Yep. And so not right. doing anything leads to turmoil so i'm really proud no of you. really proud of you guys no um and like i said i know you were part of it i was just reading that your chair um has been the 100 days but i tell you if it's been 100 days you have uh man you've been crushing it and making a difference and i know it's not just you as the team but i really appreciate it. it's a person that lives in this community you know since we're talking about Gwinnett of of the leadership because it's not it's not easy and and I'm sure you don't always have a smile on and, you know, but you got to, that empathy is really key. That empathy. Is it is. It, it's, it's not easy. It's tough. You know, elected officials put themselves out there and, and we have to accept all things that come up at us, whether good or bad, but that, you know, that comes with the territory. But the important thing is you work for the people and you're doing the people's work and you're making a difference every single day. You know, I never uh, think about the things that keep me up at night. I think more about the things that get me up every single day. And I see the light at the end of the tunnel and I see that we're gonna get through this. And to be a part of that is, is truly is what inspires me and gets me out of bed every single day.
Man, I love that. I mean, seriously, you know, the iron sharpens iron. You know, so talking about leadership, I mean, you can't say much better than that because if you're focused on, man, you know, I'm sick of wearing a mask. I'm sick of this. Is this ever going to end? We all kind of can have that feeling. But if we don't look on what things are going the right direction or how can we make someone else's day better? I've seen restaurants and people rally around things in ways I've never, never, I mean, I thought it would be likely, but I never thought to the degree people reaching out and going at it. And it's just been awesome to watch. I agree. We, we have an amazing community. I mean, it, yes, a lot of things are beyond our control. Things that like wearing masks and, and doing things that have restricted us. Or some of that's beyond our control, but what's not is our attitude about things. And um, having a positive attitude and outlook is the one thing that you can control. And it, and it also decreases your anxiety. And I will also say that sometimes you have to disconnect and unplug from social media because sometimes you know, you're know, you in those echo chambers that can just feed that toxic thinking and toxic em environment. And you just need to unplug because it, it will be good for your own mental health. <laughs> well, I knew we, I'd be doing a couple of shows this afternoon and I was kind of, you know, just being transparent. I was in that mindset of just my mind just, just racing and I was looking at things and I decided to take myself a long walk, but no ear pods, uh, air pods of music just to let my mind just be. And, and I think that during this time, I don't know about you, because I was going to ask you, what, what, what special thing do you remember for this time? Because there's things we all probably hated, but there's some probably little secrets we enjoyed. Like for me, I'll share, I did learn to slow it down a bit, and because I've always go, 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 and listen to the birds chirp or take those walks. How about you? I mean, what's something that you secretly enjoyed, you know, during the time when we were forced to be home and couldn't really do a whole lot? Well, I, I absolutely enjoyed connecting, live, reliving my childhood with my son. Uh, we watched a lot. We binged on a lot of 80s movies. I'm an 80s baby. I'm a Gen yeah. Xer, but I grew up on a lot of the 80s movies, and we revisited a lot of those with my son. And I'm proud to say that he enjoys movies like E.T., The Goonies. Awesome. He awesome. loved uh, Never Ending Story. He loved, like, oh, those are all the movies that I, I watched as a kid, and we got to watch and binge watch that during the, uh, we had all the, the Disney Plus, Hulu, Netflix. I subscribed to every single one of those um, subscription shows and uh, got to live through my childhood through that, and it, it was it was great. Good times. Yeah, my kids a little bit older, but we we did. We took them back. To, you know, I'm a little bit older on the Gen X side, but you know, we're that missing generation in between all the millennials and the other ones. But you know, it is um, it's true. But I took them back to a lot of you know, whether it's Ferris Bueller's Day Off or movies that I grew up with, and they're like, they actually liked them, and they were just movies they had never even heard of. And so some of that forced downtime, I think, if we all reflect as leaders, and, and you know, I tell people all the time, so leaders can be anybody. They don't have to have a title. Leaders can be anybody that's making a difference and inspiring people um that this time you know is how we wrap our mind around it did we re did we reset and then say hey you know what we don't have to go at life 120 miles an hour you know i'm sure you and i've always gone at life very hard but it, when it made you slow down and things were literally like your park closed you, you couldn't go into the park and use the stuff if it was closed you know so you had to do something else yeah that's exactly right and you you got to just live in the moment you know, you, you got to really just even know like, oh, wow, I have a backyard. <laughs> Let me go use my backyard. I, you know, I forgot it was even there, but I think I, I used every single piece of my house that I, that I never would have uh, thought to, to, you know, even explore if, if I had not been forced to stay home. And so, um, you know, you, it, it did force you to live in the moment and just embrace all the things that you do have and not what you don't have. Yeah, and, and I, I like that. I think that's a, that's a side venture you and I can do. What we develop a button or a system of elbow bumps, fist bumps, handshakes. Then you got the people do this. I'm, I'm like, not sure what, do they come run, give me a hug? And I'm like, that's like too many options. Because just, just tell me, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty good with whatever, but I don't know. And, I, I, you know, I'm not, you know what I mean? It's just awkward right now. So, you know, there's people going to be laughing when they listen to this, but it's very true. I reach out, I'm trying to see their comfort level of, it's a know, dance. It's a it's a it, dance. It's, I, I love it. It's it's the COVID. What do we do? Dance. <laughs> it, it, it's just it's a. I you know if if I was a big TikTok creator, you could do a really good TikTok on that. It would be awkward encounter. Let's do it. Let's yeah, do, it, do it, Ryan. You we and I are it. going to create it. We're going to create it. I was I was watching. You know, you put two people together that are. I mean, it it could go viral without even meaning to be that funny, but it could be funny. I say we do it. I say we do it. Um. So let me, a few more things. Um, so coming out of this, what are you most excited about? You know, as we're going into whatever, going into the 
Memorial Day and summer months, things are looking better. You know, more shots are getting in arms. What do you think you and other leaders and other people in this community are most excited about with the warm weather coming, maybe a restriction and mask and so much hammering on, you know, they say social distancing. It's really physical distancing. You know, that's the word. Don't touch somebody. And we've all done our part and we're getting there. We're getting closer. I see the. But what do you think people or, or your, yourself most excited about, about going towards the summer months? Um, I, I think being able to lift some of our restrictions with when it comes to community activities and events and things that we uh, used to enjoy putting on just to bring communities together. Because like I said in the beginning, it's really about creating that sense of place. And you see a lot of cities and governments are starting to open up their um, town centers and their town greens and hosting festivals. And we'll be working towards our different festivals for the summer too. We're happy to open up our recreation and aquatic centers. Um, you know, we're, we're happy to open our centers again so that people can come and visit, um, you know, our different sites and, and uh, recreation facilities. We're uh, just really excited to get back to that time uh, before the pandemic where uh, community and being in the midst of community really mattered. And so, um, I, I think a lot of leaders are really excited about that. Um, you know, being in isolation uh, was really tough and, and having opportunities to build on people's um, mental health is, is equally important. And I think we're all excited to move towards that. And there's just a good sign that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And um, I'm very optimistic about where we're heading. I am too. And, you know, it's funny because you obviously, you know, spent so much time studying the human brain and psychology and social work, whatever. You're as qualified as any person to say, you know, this, even if you like being by yourself, you know, let's do it safely. It's time to, it's time to get back together and enjoy those things we've missed. So, you know, seeing sports uh, going on tonight, I'm going to announce my kids' high school soccer game and seeing on the field and, and whatever. You know, you just see glimpses of the little things that we took for granted. And I think yes. that's the lesson we'll have to share with people way younger than us one day of like, don't ever take these things for granted. That's right. Um, you know, technology is right. technology's great that we can do this, but it still doesn't replace the face-to-face. The -face. That's right. Absolutely. So. All right. So uh, as we kind of come to a close, um, what, um, let's see here, what is, what is the best piece of advice you've been given uh, during this pandemic or, you know, something, so maybe somebody came beside you and said something that got you thinking like you, you know, that, that meant a lot to you during this time. Um, it, it really was to, it really was about living in the moment and, and not looking at the pandemic as the end of the world, but probably just the beginning of, of just a new way of life and new way of thinking about things. And so there, there's so much opportunity that came out of the pandemic, um, you know, that, it, and like you said, we took for granted things that we never thought about prior to the pandemic. So d despite that there were some really harsh realities, there were also a lot of amazing opportunities that were birthed out of it. And I think people really um, leveraged um, those opportunities and what that was in adapting to, to this new change. And so I think that was just the best um, bit of advice that I got, um, you know, just about um, you know, don't look at this as the end of the world. This is truly a beginning of something beautiful, um, you know, that can come out of it. And, and that was not the case for everybody. And I don't mean to say that to, to sound um, trite at all, but, um, you know, there were a lot of things that came out of the pandemic um, that uh, truly was uh, profound and had an impact on our lives in a positive way. Well, well, and Nicole, I mean, I just, again, it is so awesome to be able to uh, spend some time with you. And I know so many people have gotten to hear you talk and I know it'll be um, many, many, many more things uh, as things open up and continue to open up. But I really do appreciate um, you taking time to, to come on our show and let people know if they want to reach out just to the Gwinnett uh, County Board of Commissioners. Do they go to the website? What, you know, how do they get involved? They have a question or an idea. Yeah, and I, and I want to start by saying thank you for providing this platform, Ryan, for letting me share just a little bit about who I am. Oftentimes, we as politicians don't get to share the human side of who we are. Um, so thank you for that. But well, for anybody who 
anyone who wants to get involved with Gwinnett County government, um, you know, you can follow us on Facebook. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Gwinnett Gov. You can also visit our website at GwinnettCounty.com and visit the Board of Commissioners link and you'll get an information about all of the different initiatives of each of the commissioners. You can schedule meetings, you can sign up to serve on a board, you could, uh, you know, find out ways to get involved in their districts. They each have district newsletters and you can learn more about the things that they're doing in their different districts. Um, we also have a site, volunteergwinnett.net, if anyone wants to volunteer in the community and we invite all to participate. Thank you. Well, you, you are uh, welcome, Nicole. And I just, um, again, it's, it's my pleasure. And that's what, that's what we love, the Rhode Island to Georgia TikTok new communication, human connection. Look for that folks soon. Nicole, I love gonna be, it. We're going to work on that between like two and four in the morning. So we have a couple hours, right? You know, but, uh, <laughs> but um, uh, I really want to thank you. It's Nicole Love Hendrickson. She's the chairwoman of the Gwinnett County Board of Commissioners, doing an amazing job, amazing team. And again, thank you so much for your time and coming on the show, Nicole. Thank you, Ryan. All right. I'm going to wrap us up. Folks, you've been listening to other Community Connections with Ryan Sowers. Hope you tune in soon and we will see you next time.